Hi everybody, SF Logic Ninja here. You can call me Dave Earl. I don't care. Uh, finally getting back to you. Sorry, it's been a while. I got really ill and then uh, got really busy trying to, you know, find time to sleep. Luckily, I have a little time off. So I was hoping I might be able to get this video out before I go down south and have Christmas with Best Family. So today, I wanted to talk about assigning controllers in Logic. Finally, the controllers issue. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Options, I'm going to go to Track Automation, Track Automation Settings. Now, under the Edit Mode, there's a mode called Easy View and Expert View. Easy View is where we can easily do assignments, and I talked about that earlier, but Expert View is what we're going to talk about today. Because if you're an MPK49 user, if you're an Axiom user, and if you don't have a control surface, but you want something to act like a control surface, this is where we do our thing. So when I was at home, I initially did this test with an Oxygen 8. Over on the left, you'll see that the Oxygen 8 lives in a column called Zone. Any control surface that you have set um, to be used with Logic is going to be in the Zone category. So if you have an Axiom and an MPK49 and an MPC or Trigger Finger, which I have here as well, um, those would be considered separate zones. And the reason you do that is that each zone can use the same controllers, but Logic will intelligently know, hey, even though it says controller 127, uh, controller 127 from the trigger finger is different than control 127 from the key station. Okay? So I'm going to get rid of the Oxygen 8 because I just originally used that for testing purposes. So I'm going to get rid of these modes as well. Okay, here's no zone. So when it says no zone, these are actually the settings that I use for Mero when I perform live. I have a volume control, a cycle mode, uh, go to next marker, previous marker, uh, stop and play. And those are, when I play live, I use very few controllers. I don't use a lot of controllers because as you can imagine when you're on stage and you lose, you lose track of what you're doing, uh, big problem. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a new zone. I'm going to come down here to this little plus button and this zone is going to be called Key Station Pro. So now that I have that zone set up, I'm going to set up some uh, some controls. I'm going to assign some knobs over here. So what do I want to assign them to? Well, I've got this handy uh, EXS24 set up over here. And all I'm going to do, it's very, very simple. I hit Learn Mode over in the lower right-hand corner here. I tap Cut Off. I turn a knob. Now I'm going to go down to, i got to wait for the little Assignment Learn thing to go away because that little yellow window is really annoying. La, la, la. There we go. Resonance, turn a knob. And then I'm going to do uh, all the aspects of attack. Decay. Sustain. And release. and then I turn learn mode off. Once I've done that, I turn my knob, there's my cutoff, there's my resonance, there's my attack, got both attacks set there. I've got my decay, sustain, and release. And you'll note that as I turn the knob it automatically selects it in the uh, assignments window. So that's how you assign controller assignments in a nutshell. That's all you do. Now, let's say I want to be able to use those knobs for other things, right? Well, hmm. what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this mode the EXS24 mode. So when I have the EXS24 selected, that mode, maybe I press this button and that selects EXS24. Now, how do I do that? Well, over here, see it says no mode? 
So this means that um, no matter what mode I'm in, whether it's ES1 or ESX24 or ES2 or whatever, no matter what mode I'm in, these are going to be solid. These EXS24 things are going to work all the time. Don't necessarily want that. Now what I want to do is I'm going to split an ES1. I'm going to have an EXS24 mode for those knobs and an ES1 mode for those knobs. So I'll come back in here and uh, I'm going to say Keystation Pro and I want to add a mode. So let's see. First of all, I've still got this mode here. I'm going to delete that. There we go. I'm going to hit the little plus button down at the bottom of mode and I'm going to call this ES1. So I open up an ES1. I touch learn mode. And here we go. I'm going to start making assignments. Cut off. Resonance. Attack. Decay. Sustain. Release. Okay, I'm just going to assign those for now, just for the sake of time. So this is a mode called ES1. When, when this mode is selected, that little dot is selected, that means that the ES1 is in focus and it's going to use these controls. So instead of having no mode for the EXS24, I'm going to create a dedicated mode for the EXS24. So I'm going to open up an EXS24. I'm going to click the little plus button by mode. Call it EXS24. Now I need to select that mode, so I just click on it. Eh, eh. There we go. So now that little dot's next to the EXS24. You'll notice that no mode is always on because no matter what mode I'm in, whatever controls I have assigned to no mode, maybe they're transport controls like play, rewind, fast forward, whatever, it doesn't care. Um, it, when I'm in EXS24 or ES1, it's still going to play, fast forward, rewind, and stop. So EXS24 got its own mode. That's happy. I'm going to hit learn mode. I'm going to reassign these and as you guys know it goes fairly quickly. Cut off, resonance, attack, attack, decay, sustain, release. Okay. Turn learn mode off. Boom. Now I have two modes. When I'm in ES1 mode, and I go to the EXS24, the knobs don't work because I'm in that mode. So I go to the EXS24, guess what? The knobs work. So the question is, how do we switch modes? Wouldn't it be nice if we had a button? I'd punch the button and it's in EXS24 mode. I'd punch the button and it's in ES1 mode, right? Let's go back to that, um, the no mode setting, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say learn and I'm going to punch this button, and then I hit learn again, I'm going to punch the button right next to it. So now I've got two button pushes, right? So this button, I'm going to come over to the right here, and where it says class, selected track, and then it has the assignment. I'm going to just change that to mode change. Notice that there are two modes. I'll make this one EXS24 and this one will be ES1. So theoretically, if I did this right, not switching modes. So the first button, if I have an EXS, if I have an ES1 selected, um, and I punch the button, it goes to the ES1. If I hit the next button, EXS24, I have an EXS24 open, it'll start working. So there you go. There's um, Zones are going to be, like I have a trigger finger here. If I wanted to, I could assign its knobs to do something as well. And its knobs will be separate, will be seen by logic separately from these knobs. 